Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be talking about the most important blood tests that you should have made to diagnose you with PCOS and if you already suffer from PCOS. So stay tuned. So first of all, before we start, uh, I want to mention that to actually be diagnosed with PCOS, you have to fit uh, the Rotterdam criteria. And I have a video about this on diagnostic uh, of PCOS. So make sure that you watch it. Uh, it will be on the same playlist and we'll try to link it uh, up here and in the description. So um, let's go straight into it, I guess. So I'm going to be going through the things that I think are the most important and are also the most common blood tests uh, that are being used to diagnose uh, PCOS and to actually check what is your situation. So let's, without further ado, let's start. So the first thing is going to be testosterone. Testosterone is very often elevated in women with PCOS and this is this wonderful thing that is giving us acne, hirsutism, hair, hair loss, and sometimes anxiety as well. So uh, testosterone will definitely be one of the first things that you should have tested because hyperandrogenism is also one of the things that you have to have in your Rotterdam criteria. Now, sometimes it is enough to observe the effects of testosterone, which means yeah, acne, uh, hirsutism, uh, hair loss, etc. But it is always uh, better to actually have it tested. The other thing that you should have tested is glucose and glucose you should have tested probably um, quite often and every doctor will pretty much test your glucose level uh, in blood uh, so it's very very important to to do that uh, the fasting level of glucose right because uh, this is going to be your first indication that something with your insulin slash glucose blood sugar levels is a little bit out of whack so this is something definitely to keep an eye on another uh, thing is going to be insulin and now insulin is going to probably be tested twice within the same time, hopefully, because you can have tested just fasting insulin, but you can also have tested insulin after this um, lovely test, glucose test. Um, and it's going to be like insulin curve, I think it's called, uh, where you actually take insulin tests first. You drink a lot of glucose, like glucose, very sweet drink. I know a lot of people complain about it. I didn't mind it. And then um, around one or two hours later, uh, they're going to take you in for another blood test and they're going to determine then how your body kind of handles glucose and so on. So this is a little bit better test. It gives you a little better indication. However, it still is not 100% conclusive to actually say that you have insulin resistance. And then that's where the next one is coming in, which is A1C. And this is very important. This is a, one that a lot of doctors actually skip, but this can give you an indication how your glucose levels have been for um, the last three months. Uh, so it's very, very important because with those two, you can still miss the fact that there's something wrong with glucose. I don't know. Maybe you have been fasting the whole previous day and all of a sudden your body is acting a little bit better. Maybe your insulin resistance level is not as severe, uh, which will not show in those less uh, sensitive um, uh, tests. But A1C will definitely show you that. Now, another thing that might be actually quite low in PCOS is SHBG, which is sex hormone binding globulin. And this is very common. This is actually one of the main tests that should be done on you. It hasn't been done on me, so I guess it depends on the country. Yeah, and again, this is something that can be lower in PCOS. Another thing is AMH, <laughs> very slowly, anti-mullerian hormone. Uh, which very often is elevated in, in PCOS. Next thing is follicle stimulated hormone, which generally should be either normal or, or low, depending on a person. So you might have PCOS and still have normal levels, but in some people it will be quite low. Next thing, luteinizing hormone, which very often with PCOS is quite high. So it's also another thing very, very important to check. Another thing is estrogen. Again, in some women, they're going to be normal. In some women, they're going to be very, very high. So it's important to know that. So then you know how to tackle, you know, your further treatment, etc. DHEAs, again, in some people, especially with a very much adrenal 
um, adrenal PCOS can have a higher level of DHEAs. And that is also very important because DHEAs can actually influence the same thing as testosterone. So you might have um, high testosterone levels and have acne, for example, and hirsutism and la la la, but you might have good testosterone levels but have high DHEAs and they can actually cause the similar things that testosterone does. So it's very important to have them both checked to know how to tackle them in the future, especially if you're going to want to uh, go with a little bit more natural methods of, of managing your symptoms. Another thing is, I don't know even how, how to read it, but I'm going to give it a bash, androstenidium. Anyway, this might be elevated as well. Now, so those are your typical tests that you can, you should have made for PCOS. Now, there's one more thing um, that you should actually have uh, done, and this is ultrasonogram. And ultrasonogram normally will be made intervaginally, which means that they're going to put that in you and check your ovaries. And this is very important because one of the criteria, uh, again, for a true criteria, again, you have to fit uh, you have to fill in two out of three so you don't necessarily have to have uh, polycystic ovaries in your ultrasonogram but very often you will have polycystic ov ovaries which doesn't mean that you have cysts like you do have cysts but there are not the big cysts um, polycystic ovaries look a little bit different they have almost like this pearl there's always presses like you have pearls around uh, around your um, your ovaries because those are eggs that actually have not been released when they should have been released. So this is something to take under consideration as well and possibly demanded from your doctor. I definitely think that this is something that has been missed a lot of times. For myself, it took me forever to be actually directed to ultrasonogram. So I think that is absolutely crucial. Now, uh, when you diagnose PCOS, it might be a good thing to also um, make sure that there are no other problems that might be causing, you know, similar symptoms. So first thing is going to be TSH, and this is a thyroid hormone. Um, again, I would say that if you're doing um, hormone um, thyroid panel, which I think everybody should have made quite regularly, you should not only check TSH, but also uh, T3 and T4 completely different, you know, tangent here, uh, but it's important to, to take. Cortisol, now cortisol uh, might be taken, um, taken from blood, but there is also this, I think it's called Dutch test, uh, when you spit through the day to a different vials and they check the levels of, of cortisol throughout the day, which seems to be better because it actually shows you uh, where is it being, you know, released when it should be or it shouldn't be etc because it, it, with um with cortisol the rhythm of cortisol is very very important you should have the highest cortisol in the morning when you get up energized you know you're ready for your day but actually when it is uh, very low um then uh you know you're feeling groggy and then you have you're very tired at night etc etc so that that might be a sign of the uh, of a cushing syndrome or or whatever Next thing is going to be prolactin. Um, to rule out elevated prolactin, prolactin, so prolactinomania, hyperlactinemia. Uh, high prolactin also can, uh, you know, block your periods. Especially, I used to have high prolactin levels actually, um, and it can. Uh, so you can have both the different times of your life as well. This is important thing to know. Uh, it can block your um, ovulation and it can block your periods because elevated prolactin levels are very common in women in pregnancy. So if you have too high prolactin levels, your body thinks that you're basically pregnant, I guess. And you also might start, um, if you have very high prolactin levels, you can start producing milk and stuff. Milk and stuff. Uh, another thing is 17-hydroprogesterone. And this is one of you actually told me about. Uh, I didn't know about it before, so 17-OH. Um, and this might be a congenial adrenal hyperplasia. So this will rule out this condition. Uh, very, very important because they might have some overlaps. Next thing is HCG, which is basically um, pregnancy hormone. So if you're not having your periods regular, they will check if you're pregnant. And uh, another thing, IGF-1, uh, which will rule out excess growth hormones. And another thing that you might uh, want to think about is doing your um, lipid 
profile, which means to check your, well, we say it usually check your cholesterol, but not only full cholesterol, but also LDL, so the low density lipids, uh, your HDL, your triglycerides, and uh, yes, and that's it. Because especially with triglycerides, high triglycerides are very co often uh, connected to uh, sugar, actually. So you might have elevated triglycerides, for example, but also if you're a person who struggles with insulin resistance, this might have general uh, bad effect on your um, lipid levels, which of course, as we know, can uh, increase uh, the possibility of getting cardiovascular disease. So that is it. That was very quick uh, run through all of the tests that I would recommend for you to have to make sure that you have PCOS or to make sure what in what is actually the biggest contributor to your symptoms in PCOS. I think it's good to have uh, the full panel uh, done quite regularly. Maybe very quickly you will understand that it's just testosterone that is elevated, you know, maybe insulin, maybe this or that. And you're going to just uh, repeat those and check if there are any changes there. But it's very important to do that. Now, again, this is not a medical advice. This is for you to go to your doctor and discuss it with your doctor. I am not a medical professional. I'm just a girl reading articles on the Internet. And uh, if you have liked this video, uh, make sure that you give me a like. It really helps my channel a lot to beat the algorithm. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. I'm putting the link down below right now. And um, this is a great way for you um, to support the channel. It also helps me out a lot to buy back my time to do more of those videos for you guys. So thank you again very much, and I'll see you very soon. Thank <laughs> you.